Now, most of you out there are thinking, I've got a business, Cheryl. I mean, it's a given. I call it a business, so it's a business. Um, but I got to ask you deep down, really, right? Do you really have a business? C -P -C -P -P. Hey there, my loves. Welcome back to my channel and CPTV, the place where current and aspiring entrepreneurs can get the tips, the tools, the strategies, and the roadmaps to turn their passions into businesses and grow their businesses into freedom. If that sounds like your place, then you're going to want to make sure you subscribe, that you like, and you share because every Tuesday and every Friday, I am bringing it to you based on my experience growing multiple six figure and seven figure businesses. One of the things that I love is to help other people get there too. So I am CP or Cheryl Perez, whichever you prefer. And today we really need to talk. It is Facts Friday. And normally Facts Friday, I take a question from the audience and I answer it for everyone to be able to get that same insight. But I'm going to switch it up on you today because as you know, Friday for me is all about happy hour. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, but I'm switching it up because I've got a question for you out there. And I really, really want you to think about what we're talking about. And I want you to let me know in the comments really where you are. And that is this whole notion of when and if you've got a hobby or a business, right? When and if you've got a hobby or a business. So we need to really talk, and I'm going to be bringing out Asher today. For those of you who don't know Asher, you're going to get a chance to meet him in a little bit. But the real question I have for you is, do you have a business or do you have a hobby? Great question. And I think we really have to dive into what the differences are in those because I've had both, right? I've got hobbies and I'll share those with you in a little bit. And I've got businesses and I actually went through phases where I felt like my businesses were businesses, but they were really hobbies. And so today I am actually going to help you figure all of it out. Let's get to work. Now, most of you out there are thinking, I've got a business, Cheryl. I mean, it's a given. I call it a business, so it's a business. Um, but I got to ask you deep down, really, right? Do you really have a business? I mean, that's the question. And in order to have this conversation, I have got to give you some good examples in order for me to be able to do the comparison. And one of the best examples is me. Now, I've heard you loud and clear, and I just want you guys to bear with me because I don't typically get all personal and mushy um, on CPTV. It's very, you know, educational, and this is what you got to do and getting people to the next level. It's kind of the trainer in me. But I promise that I am working on sharing more with you guys and opening up a little bit. So I am going to use this example of me because um, I have hobbies. Now, sadly, it has taken me a minute um, because most of my hobbies in some way, shape or form have actually generated some revenue for me. And so it really did take me a minute to really be able to identify which ones were hobbies and which ones were businesses. Um, but I've been guilty of treating my business like a hobby, especially when I started my very first business over 25 years ago, which was a consulting practice focusing on nonprofit organizations, capacity building, grant writing, fundraising, board development, all that kind of stuff. And I still do that in my business coaching business and in my um, consulting business consulting business. But really, um, at the time when I first started it, it was a business. I mean, the whole thing, I set it up, it had the LLC, the financials and everything, but I was treating it more like a hobby. And so even though I walked around and I said, oh, I've got this business, I was still working in my nine to five. I was still grinding there. And that was really my focus. I was giving everything there. And I kind of did this um, hobby business uh, more sporadically. And that was really the defining factor for me. So I'm going to use an example of what some of my hobbies are, and then I'm going to show you kind of the differences because you may have been in the place that I just discussed with you where I was in the very beginning. So I'm going to start with the signs, the signs that you have to recognize in order to recognize and know that your business is really a hobby and, um, or, you know, you might be treating what you think is a hobby more like a business. So, uh, I want to give you an example of a couple of my hobbies and I do have hobbies. Those of you out there who know me will probably think all I do is work, but I do. I have hobbies. Two of my favorite hobbies is gardening, 
believe it or not, I absolutely love flowers. I have since I was little. My dad raised me planting flowers every single year. So we would go out, we would put the annuals out. We had a garden in the back. It included collard greens um, and lettuce. And he showed me the whole thing about composting and growing your own vegetables. And we actually had like tomato plants in our flower beds. He would like just stick them wherever. So it was almost like we, we had tomatoes growing all around the house. But at that early age, working with my dad, I got the gardening bug. And he taught me a lot about soil and planting. And so to this day, every year for Mother's Day, because I live in Northeast Ohio. And so anybody who's ever been to Northeast Ohio, by the way, Cleveland does rock. So, you know, come on over and check it out. Cleveland Rocks, Youngstown Rocks. I'm from this area. Um, and I don't get to garden all year round. It's really only a handful of months. So I prepare myself every year for this gardening thing that I do. And that's truly a hobby because um, while I have helped other people with their landscaping and they've given me money or bought me dinner, it's not really a revenue thing. It's really something that I do for pleasure. The second hobby that I really have to do that's more a better example for you guys is makeup. You tell anyone about this. Yeah, I'm gonna send a postcard to my family. You have heard me say this in other videos. I love makeup. When I was in college, I actually worked as a clinic counter manager. And so I learned so much about skin, so much about makeup, and I've always really been into it, but that kind of put the cherry on the top for me. And so makeup, in addition to being my full-time job, which was nine to five when I was in graduate school, it was also kind of a hobby thing I did on the side. And so makeup, really truly could have been a business, I suppose, but I don't really treat it as that. And so if you are treating your business and you're seeing these signs, like the signs that I experience in my makeup hobby versus in your business, if you see these signs, then you are probably functioning more as a hobbyist than you are as an entrepreneur. So let's talk about what the signs really are. Sign number one, your hobby or whatever it is that you're doing is something that you sort of do sporadically or occasionally. Um, and that is critical. Like in the example of me with makeup, um, because I was so into makeup and I tried to, you know, I was doing faces. Um, I went through a period where on the side I was doing, um, uh, bridal parties, um, weddings, people's kids proms. Um, I've done like charity events where it was like, you know, giving free makeup. I've done, um, like photo shoots for people. I've done all of those things because my friends recognize that I like to do makeup and that I have a lot of it and that I can actually like do it to other people. And so, I'm always that friend that when we're going out, me and my girlfriends, they're like, can you do my makeup? And I love doing it. So yes, of course I do it. But I've actually made money doing makeup before, but I only ever really did it sporadically and occasionally. It wasn't something that I was doing regularly. I definitely wouldn't put myself in the MUA category. Um, I love the colors and I love the process, but I only really do it as needed, right? I only really do it sporadically, even though I've made some money doing it. So in that instance, makeup, for me, being a makeup artist is a hobby. If you are doing those exact same things like in your business and you're only doing it sporadically or occasionally, then it's probably more of a hobby for you than it is a business. Sign number two, my makeup hobby. Uh, the bottom line is I allow other things to become a priority over my commitment to doing makeup, meaning um, I can let an appointment creep in and, you know, I don't need to necessarily do makeup. If somebody wanted me to come over their house and do makeup for a prom and I had to work, I would not go over and do makeup. Um, or I could just quite frankly, we're supposed to be doing somebody's makeup and just be tired and prioritize my own self-care over the makeup. So that's how I know that makeup is a hobby for me because I allow other things to distract my commitment to actually doing makeup. Sign number three, makeup for me is a hobby because I don't have a plan. I don't have a strategy surrounding how I'm going to grow my makeup clientele. I don't have a business plan or a growth strategy written down. And I mention business plan and growth strategy because they really are two different things. If you want to find out what the differences are, I won't get into them right now because I've already done a video on those and I'm going to link up to it in the cards and also in the description below um, that the growth strategy versus business plan. I've got an entire playlist 
playlist around it. So if you have a business and you don't have a plan, you are going to want to check that series out because it actually walks you through my process that I go through annually in order to develop a growth strategy for my business. And it will talk to you about the differences in a business plan, what its components should be in a growth plan. But with makeup, I don't have one. So that's how I know it's a hobby. Like I'm not putting a lot of mental effort into really coming up with a strategy or a plan to grow. If you are treating your business like that and you don't have a plan and you don't have a strategy and you don't have a long-term vision, then it's just a hobby. It's not a business. And that's okay too. But if you keep telling yourself it's a business and you continue to not devise a strategy or a plan, then I hate to tell you, it's time to meet Asher. Here he is. And for those of you who've never met Asher, I want you to describe who Asher is and when you see him, what to expect. Asher, as referred to in the Urban Dictionary as Asher Syndrome, means the distinct inability to get your shit together. <laughs> exactly, right? Get your shit together, all right? You have a hobby, Kimosabi, unfortunately. Why you, you Kimosabi? Uh, so ultimately, that is how you know. And that sign is very specific. It's easy. If you don't have a plan, you still got a hobby. Sign number four, that makeup is my hobby. Um, I actually wait for the opportunities to come to me. I am not actively out there going after business. I am not actively out there marketing to clients. I'm not going to networking events. I'm not creating social media around it content around it. If somebody contacts me and reaches out to me and wants to take advantage of some makeup services, at that point, I'll consider whether or not I really want to do it, who they are, because I really don't necessarily always even charge for it. So makeup for me is, you know, not really something I'm going after. If the opportunity comes, I do it. And that's how I know it's a hobby. And sign number five, that makeup is my hobby and not my business. And if this sign or any of these actually apply to you, then I need you to get your mind together because you've got a hobby and we need to do something to turn it into a business if that's what you really want. But sign number five is I invest really nothing into makeup. Um, when I get what, what the occasional job or, you know, opportunity that I have to actually do someone else's makeup and they insist on paying me during the course of that process, I will take that money and spend it. <laughs> I don't like invest back into makeup. I think that, you know, 90% of what I make from a makeup perspective is mine to spend and do whatever I want to with it. I'm not investing in marketing and all that kind of stuff. So if you are treating your business that way and 90% or a hundred percent of what you bring in, you pay yourself with, and you're reinvesting very little back into your business, then it's not a business. It's a hobby because your business is never going to grow, right? That money that you get coming into your business is revenue. It's not compensation. If you think it's compensation, then you still got a nine to five mentality and mindset. And I'm going to talk to you about mindset in a whole separate video. And I, and I'm going to link to that one up here as well because that mindset is important. If you think that everything that comes into your business is compensation and not revenue, then you are really working in a hobby zone and not a business zone. So Asher wanted to get in on the fun again. Um, you guys have already met him, obviously. But if you need help, I am going to give you something for free today. An absolute freebie. I love giving away freebies, especially the tools that people need to work through things. And I just want to make sure I bring it up for you because if you are having a hard time turning your hobby into a business because you don't have a strategy, you don't have a plan, you're not reinvesting, you're only doing it occasionally and you're kind of waiting for things to come your way, then you are going to want to grab my latest freebie. And that is the Side Hustle to Entrepreneurial Freedom Workbook. This baby is amazing. The feedback that I am getting on it and the transformation that people are experiencing, I am very excited about. So I want to give you guys the opportunity to, it's about 30 pages of worksheets, workbooks. If you actually sat and did this and filled it all out over the course of a weekend, you could really have your entire game plan for your side hustle to entrepreneurial freedom and ultimately taking that hobby and turning it into a business. So make sure you click the link below and grab your workbook right now um, because I may actually remove the link at some point and 
you may have to go to my website to actually get it. But right now it's down there for you. So make sure that you grab it. And again, I mean, it's okay if you've been treating your business as a hobby, but it's only okay if you keep telling yourself that you don't really want to grow that business and turn it into a lifestyle of financial freedom, decision-making freedom, and actually, you know, travel freedom and everything else. If you're okay being in the hobby space, then stay in the hobby space. But I have a feeling that if you're watching this video and you've subscribed to CPTV, you really want a business. You want to be a real entrepreneur. And the first step is really turning that hobby into that business. So I hope that you guys were able to answer those questions. Um, make sure, let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you subscribe. And until next time, it is time to get to happy hour, people. It's Friday. Bye-bye.